Kia ora, good evening. Kim.com's web of intrigue has ensnared more of our politicians. It's confirmed Winston Peters met with him. The question now is just how the Prime Minister knew about the secret liaisons. John Key's being accused of getting the lowdown from one of our spy agencies, but adding to the mystery whispers about a gossip columnist. Political reporter Katie Bradford with more. John Key, the minister in charge of spies, accused of spying on Winston Peters. This is a surveillance matter and I want to know more about it. Ah, oh, well, people tell me things from time to time. Who? Not going to tell you. He says it's spy agencies. It's definitely not spy agencies. I wish it was as sophisticated as that, but it's not true. John Key yesterday revealed the New Zealand first leader had been to the dot-com mansion three times. Winston Peters know. insists so the on only on way that? John Key would Most know that is not. through his spy you agencies. Do you have any other sources then to back that up? Hey? Do you have any other sources Don't you worry about it? Spying you will see in the fullness of time. Don't worry about it. But could John Key have learnt about Mr Peters' visits through this gossip column a few days ago? The Prime Minister's not saying. From time to time, people see things, and from time to time, they tell me. All this has Winston Peters' dealings with .com under scrutiny. After the January 2012 raids, he thought the internet mogul should be booted out of the country. But then he changed his mind. It was after I put out a press tab and saying that he should not be in this country, and he wanted to put his side of the story, and that's fair enough in my book. So I went out and found out what his side of the story was, and funny enough, uh, things are not what they seem on that matter. In the past two years, Winston Peters has visited the Coatesville mansion three times, discussing Dotcom's immigration case and the GCSB, saying he couldn't reveal that yesterday due to a confidentiality agreement. As the arguments and accusations continue, perhaps it's all best summed up in a tweet from Kim.com himself, saying, welcome to the most exciting and disruptive election year in New Zealand history. I think in the passage of time, uh, you'll find that uh, hypocrisy comes to mind. Maybe, maybe even corruption. That from the man facing a trial over donations from .com. Katie Bradford, One News. Our political editor Corin Dan joins us now. Corin, what's John Key up to with all this attention on Winston Peters? Look, he was on the offensive yesterday, John Key, and he found himself on the defensive today. But look, there's mud flying everywhere on this dot-com issue, and I'm not sure it does any uh, politicians much good, really. We even had Labour MP Claire Curran today coming out saying she'd met him a few times. I don't think it does any of them any good, but it's certainly a sign uh, that we are in an election campaign, that's for sure. Now, the key issue is, is this damaging the key government? Now, in my view, until there is a smoking gun, some sort of concrete evidence that can prove some of these allegations that John Key has in some way misled the public, well then I don't think it is.